We're going to take a look at the three gun sites adopted by World War II U.S. bomber gunners. First up is the 35 mil rad ring sight. This ring sight would be mounted on top of the Browning M2 50 caliber machine gun. Gunners would make sure that the center of the crosshair is always aligned with the tip of the sight post. They also needed to maintain a 20 inch sight base. That's a distance from the ring sight to their face. They would use this ring sight for ranging and for deflection firing. So for ranging, it's it's pretty simple. For a single engine fighter like this Falkwolf F-190, as the fighter is flying its interceptor course towards you, and you would just uh, reference the wingspan and frame it on this diameter. So if the wingspan touched this ring sight diameter, then the interceptor was 150 yards away. If it was half of the diameter, then that's 300 yards away. And if the interceptor's wingspan framed one fourth or diameter distance, then the interceptor was 600 yards away, which is the effective range on the Browning machine gun utilizing this sight. One disadvantage of this gun sight is that gunners were taught to adopt this gun sight for incoming interceptors only. So if the fighter was flying parallel to you, you weren't necessarily going to shoot at it and try to leave the target. The second gun sight we want to discuss is the Sperry K3 automatic computing gun sight. The Sperry K3 sight is mounted on the upper turret of the B-17 bomber. The gun sight is connected to the fire control unit of the upper turret. If you want to spin the upper turret, you would just rotate these two handles. Got a dead man lever. There's your triggers for your 50 caliber machine guns. It's a comms mic switch. It has uh, like a motorcycle grip. It's got a range control uh, handle, which is rotating this range cable, which feeds information into the K3 gun sight. The optical head of the K3 sight rotates independently of the unit. A sky filter. We have interceptors coming from the side and deploy that. This is made by Polaroid. A flip up, back up sight uh, if needed. To use this gun sight for tracking, ranging, and firing on an interceptor, the top turret gunner of the B-17, turn on the illuminated reticle, adjust the brightness. Looking through the reticle, going to see a horizontal line and two vertical lines. And all he needs to do is frame the wingspan with those vertical lines and he's rotating the range grip which gives him the ability to expand and contract those vertical lines once he frames the wingspan and the interceptor is within range which is 600 yards except for head-on attack then it's a thousand yard and open fire not only does this gun sight account for deflection but it accounts for lead and bullet drop. So this gunner can actually fire on any interceptor coming from any direction. The General Electric design pedestal gun sight adopted on the B-29 bomber. The B-29 bomber, they used remote controlled gun sights and they would be operating one to three turrets. This gun sight would be linked to one to three turrets with azimuth control, and elevation control. I have an illuminated reticle, for tracking, ranging, and then firing. Our thumbs are the triggers on this gun sight. This was a much more effective gun sight. Between this gun sight, which has gyroscopes and position sensors, is actually a computer. It's a vacuum tube analog computer, weighs about 125 pounds, and it's calculating a ballistic solution for the turrets that you're controlling, accounting for bullet drop, drift, lead, deflection, parallax, much more sophisticated gun system than the than the Sperry K3 gun sight. To use this gun sight, the gunner would uh, turn on the illuminated head, dial in the wingspan of the interceptor. Just like the Sperry K3 sight, this gunner on the B-29 would frame the wingspan of the interceptor. It's the thumb triggers to send the 50 caliber slugs to the target. Effective range was 900 yards. 